Welcome to Gloved Up Garage. On this episode, we're going to work on this interior a little bit. You can see I've started to mess with a few things. I took down the pillar gauges. Working on that shifter because it's got to go. I think we're going to get these seats out today. Stay tuned. We'll see what happens. All right, so one of the things I'm going to start off with is getting all the garbage out of the car. So uh, this extra stuff. Yeah, go. We'll kind of do an inventory of what's in the interior, too, because I really haven't been through the interior as much as I was the, the trunk. So I got a rubber floor mat here. No intentions of keeping it. Some wire loom. Cologne bottle. Nautica some zip ties and some random garbage. I know it's really hard to see. I'm sorry. This flashlight's in the way now. So we got a radio. Let's see what we got. Oh, JVC. Might come in handy. Might wind up using it. That's pretty cool. One of the things I wanted to do is see if I can get this back seat out. So, oh, I don't really want to kneel in this thing yet because this carpet's wet. I'm going to set this. Let's see. I'm going to have to set this down. Let me come so back. To get a back seat out of a Fox body, it's held in with like a wire bracket, or actually a wire on the bottom of the seat and then a bracket on the body. So essentially what you have to do is push in on the front of the seat and then pull up and you'll hear it pop out of the brackets. And that's what I did here. Uh, this thing reeks of cat pee. Um, and the, you can see the wire in the bottom of the seat is not in the greatest shape, but I think it's still usable. I'm pretty sure I can clean all that up. So let me get this out of the way and then we'll look at the floor. Well, what I was hoping to find was not there. Some of these Fox bodies have a build sheet, which would have a lot of information about the car, the options and stuff like that. What I did discover is that the middle seat belts are still here, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't see the outboard seat. That would be mounted right there. In fact, that bolt is quite rusty. Oh, that's going to be a lot of fun to fix. So that's out of there. Still has a retractor in it. Let's see. We might. Oh, yeah, it's there. If you guys can see that, the rear seat belt is still in there. It's just tucked behind this piece of insulation, which is behind this quarter panel plastic. And that's cool. That wasn't even bolted in. There's uh, supposed to be bolts at the bottom, but. Uh, yeah, they're there. In fact, that's one of them. If you guys can see, it's pretty dark. I think it's just uh, rusted and nasty. So, I'm going to put you guys down again. Get the seat out. One more thing done. Uh, so, the back seat's out. Scroll over here and look at it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to save that one or not. I was hoping to save the at least the cardboard back. That thing is so nasty. Uh, I don't think there's any way I'd ever get it clean. I don't think anybody reproduces these. If you guys know of anybody that has these, uh, please, please link them in the comments. I'll go through and look. What I'm probably gonna have to do is find one from another vehicle that's in much better shape. Um, of course, I don't really care about color, so I'm sure there's a million of the red ones out there that have been tossed. Um, so hopefully I can find a red one in, in better shape and use it. Um, yeah, it's still got water in the car from where the windows were knocked out of it. I'm going to have to pull all that insulation out and see what's on Insulation is out, and I am pretty happy about what I see. What I don't see, um, I mean, there's a little bit of rust there underneath that sound deadening and a little bit over there under that sound deadening, but I see a pretty solid floor from what I can tell, um, which is good because to replace this has to go all the way from here in the front, all the way back there to the tail light panel. This whole section is one piece that you would have to buy. 
um, with the rust back there in the spare tire well, if this was rusted out, I had pretty much planned to replace the entire panel. The way it is right now, I can probably just repair the areas I need to repair. Um, now that's what I can see at this point. I'll know more once I get those seat belts out and I can see underneath of um, those sections. Those are actually where part of the uh, torque box is formed. So that has me concerned about what the underside of this thing looks like. All right, before we get too deep into the teardown of this car, I want to take a moment and kind of explain the way that a proper restoration and documentation should go. Basically, you should take photos of everything that you're going to take off. That way you know the position before uh, you started the disassembly. You can kind of see the way that a wiring harness might be laid or, um, you know, what screws might be in a panel or something like that. The second step is to label everything that you can. Uh, it never hurts to over label or over detail what you're working on. What I'm getting ready to do, I'm going to take off the quarter plastics on the inside. So I'm going to write on the outside of this bag with a Sharpie what side I'm working on, what the hardware goes to. Um, I might even go so far as to date this as to when I took it off. I'll take a picture of the screws the best that I can. Um, on these Fox bodies, there's certain links that are used on different parts of the panel. So I'll try to notate those as they come out and take photos as they come out so that I'll know uh, which screw goes back in. Uh, I might wind up using a hardware kit from one of the restoration companies just because I want this thing to be nice when it goes back together. Uh, this restoration, I hope, would last longer than me, longer than my kids. Um, so I want a good uh, good quality hardware to go back into it. All right, so I just got done taking some photos. Uh, to, like I said, I was going to document this as I go through. So something I've noticed, and I'm going to have to do some research on this. Um, if you can see, the entire inside of this is undercoated or something. Um, I've never seen this before. So I don't know if this was factory or if this was something that was done you know by the dealer or really I don't know I've never seen this before in a Fox body um, I do know that there's been a lot of mention of undercoating holding in moisture and then that'll cause extra rust so, right, so I was getting ready to take off <clears throat> excuse me this insulation on the quarter panel here what I noticed was when I peeled this back that's a piece of window tent that's got that spray paint on it um, that would not have been factory. So this is what being a good detective, especially when you're doing a restoration like this, you know, these are the things you're gonna wanna look for. And as you can tell, so somebody has come in here and undercoated um, around this window, all inside the quarter panel. Um, and I did see a little bit under the carpet <clears throat> that I'm sitting on, so. And all my seat belts in the front are missing. So we'll have to figure out some seat belts for that because right there is a little hole that goes into the door jam, makes contact with the door. That should have a retractor in it. The retractor would be right there. Coming up that B pillar, <clears throat> that's where the shoulder piece would bolt to. So a little bit of detective work will get you a long way. And you can kind of see the edge of the headliner, that blue is peeking through. So somebody covered the blue headliner with this velour. Maybe they blacked all this out um, while they were doing this interior blackout. Um, so if they would have only known how rare this blue interior really is, maybe they wouldn't have done it. But it is what it is. Again, not my taste. I've blacked out some interiors before, so I'm guilty of the same thing. But um, it is what it is. I went ahead and took the back window plastic out because it's going to be inside for a while. So I laid it off to the side. I can always... Uh, tape it back on when I need to, but I want to go ahead and work on the third brake light. So you can see I've got my bag labeled here, third brake light. Went ahead and took the screws out. Um, unplugged the bulbs. And you can see way down in here just a little bit. That is actually, it looks gray on the camera, but it's blue. So this is the original third brake light. Uh, of course the lens is missing, so I'll have to come up with one of those. Cool thing about this, I can take this apart, clean it all up, strip this black off of it, um, 
repaint the silver backing in there with like uh, Krylon chrome paint, make that look good again. Um, on these coops, the way the third brake light actually attaches, these little brackets just clip on here on either side. So I don't think I can, yeah, there's no way for me to get it one handed because it's actually pretty tight. So these things, I have uh, lost these before. They're very hard to come by because anybody that converts a car to a race car, they just throw these things in a bucket of bolts. They usually wind up somewhere at the bottom and they're hard to find. So I'm gonna take very care of getting these off. Um, they'll get sandblasted, painted, and put back on. And then once I get them off, we'll pull this cover off, see what the deck lid looks like. Or I'm, not the deck lid, package tray, right. sorry. Now that we got those off, they're in our bag. Third brake light's out of the way. So we got some blue poking through. Looks like somebody just threw some uh, AutoZone carpet over top of this, which is fine. Uh, it was falling apart anyway. You can see this insulation stuff is not very good. It doesn't hold up well. As soon as you get any bit of moisture on this thing, it'll start to fall apart. Um, so we'll hang on to this just as kind of a reference. I will not use this over. Uh, again, I'll probably try to find a blue one if I can and then have it recovered. There's no way to take this blue carpet off of this cardboard that I've ever found. Um, usually, once you peel them apart, they, this thing disintegrates, as you can see here. So, I don't know, maybe I can reproduce that in some ABS, which I've, I've got a lot of ABS around here. So. I'll hold on to this and possibly use it as a template and then cover it with uh, the correct blue stuff. Um, who knows? We'll hang on to it though. You never really want to throw anything away on one of these cars that you're doing restoration on until you're done with it. You don't know exactly what you're going to need. You might need some bolts or some screws or <clears throat> clips or something. So throwing that stuff away can cost you a lot of time and a lot of frustration down the so road. So now we got that package tray cover out of the way. What I wanted to look at, I had heard somewhere along the line that these this car might have been unmarked. So what they would have done is after it was out of service um, as a marked car, they would have taken it in, painted it. I believe that's when it got painted white. Uh, and then it would have had some internal lights installed instead of the light bar on top. When they do that, they typically will drill holes back here in the package tray to mount the lights. What I'm not seeing or any holes that shouldn't be there uh, or that would match up with lights. So it's very possible that they may have mounted them up into the headliner, which I haven't got that far yet. Um, they might have had something, a rack or who knows, they might have had something set up. But so far, this looks to be like every other coupe that I've ever pulled the package tray out of. All these holes that you see here, these are all stock. Um, you can see the speakers on a coupe, they actually go into these little keyhole things <clears throat> and there's like a black uh, plastic bracket that mounts the speaker into the hole. Finding those is going to be fun. Again, a lot of times guys make these into race cars, they just toss that stuff out. Or somewhere along the line, somebody decides to put aftermarket speakers in and they toss those things. Um, so yeah, we'll try to locate those. I may or may not need them, but who knows. Again. I'd rather have it and not need it than not have it and need so it. While the window is open, I can get back here and take a look at the quarter plastics and get them out a little easier. First thing you'll notice is this was the original blue quarter plastic. Um, it has been spray painted black, has been spray painted black. Um, I'm gonna have to figure something out. I might be able to use oven cleaner to strip this stuff off. I build model cars and I can probably use the same technique of getting plastic off of these or paint off of these plastics as I would a model car. So brake fluid, um, Castrol Super Clean, uh, there's a lot of different things that you can use. So this piece is in good shape other than just being the wrong color, we'll clean it up, probably reuse it. The quarter plastic, uh, I'm not really sure what's going on here. I don't know if that was a covering, if that's just where the plastic has started to give up, if it's faded out that bad, or if somebody spray painted it somewhere along the lines. I don't really know. I'm gonna have to work on it a lot to see what's going on, but there are numerous sections like this. 
especially up here in the corners. So I'm not sure if they had a covering on this, what the deal is. It's quite thick. You can see the paint and get the edge right. Um, I mean, it's doesn't, there's a lot of paint on there. We'll put it that way. A lot more than what it should be. So it's in good shape. It's not cracked or broken, which is, that's a good thing. And the back is blue. These are some production marks that are on the back here. So again, it's like being a detective. You're looking for clues. There would have been a rivet uh, right there that held the bottom section on. Our screw goes through here. Other than that, there's a couple of, a couple of screw holes right there. Mm -hmm. Those are not factory. So that tells me the police department may have had something mounted right there. We'll have to look into that. I wonder if... The, the other side, but yeah. See on the back side, those are the two screw holes poking through. We'll have to check that out. Um, during the process of when I purchased this car, I got added to a group. And there's some really good guys in this group that have contacts to the officer that, one of the officers that used to drive this car. So I'm going to reach out to them now that uh, we found another little tidbit about this car. And we will see what they say, what was mounted back here. So I got the right interior quarter trim off nothing really special over here nothing uh, out of the ordinary what i did notice i mean other than the glaring hole at the bottom here where the rest is uh do you see those yeah you see all those little holes that have been filled in and they got spray paint over top of them so what that actually is is a uh, old school dent pole um, I would say this thing was involved in some kind of collision on the right side. What they would typically do is, uh, they would drill a hole, they would put a screw in it, and then they would use a dent puller to pull the panel back out flat. Um, as wavy as this panel is, and it's kind of hard, well, you can definitely see it there. There's going to be a lot of mud in this quarter, and I would bet that is why this failed down here. Either there was not the correct amount of seam sealer put into it, or there was some sort of water intrusion that was building up. It could have just been bad to begin with um, after the police got done using with it. I mean, we do see a lot of snow and ice and stuff here in the winter. They do use a lot of salt on the roads. That stuff can creep in and start rust and corrosion and some of the hard to reach places that a car wash wouldn't blow it out of. So uh, it's possible that that's what caused it. It uh, doesn't really matter because it's getting replaced. Uh, this whole quarter panel is gonna be cut off and a new quarter panel welded in. Um, this was something I knew going in when I bought the car. It's no big surprise. Uh, just interesting to see some of the old ways that they used to do body repair. Nowadays, they would, um, I say nowadays, but modern technology, they would use a stud gun, which is uh, kind of the same theory. Instead of drilling a hole, it welds a little stud onto the panel. You attach a dent puller, you pull it back out. There's a million different methods of using it. Uh, some guys would actually go inside of here with a hammer and dolly and get it straightened out. Just one of the cool things that you find when you're working on old cars. Well, we went over to the left side, we'll go over to the right side too. So you can tell this, uh, obviously it was blue at one point. We've got some marker here. So 519 is possibly in the area that this was built. Uh, and that could be A as an A shift. I've got some friends that work at Ford, so I'll have to follow up with that. I know this car was built in May of 1987. So this could be the date that it was put together. Um, sometimes workers will you know, leave a little mark on there to let you know what's up. Um, interior panel seeing some stuff here that I have not seen before. So there's a lot of white paint sprayed up in here. And then the black is over top of it. So I'm not really sure what's going on with that. Um, this wasn't, yeah, I guess it was in the area. So this area here would be like right behind this area. And you can tell there's a lot of mud, Bondo, filler, whatever you want to call it in this area. So it's possible that this thing is just absolutely full of filler and they just kind of 
sprayed some of this on the back by accident. Hopefully that comes off. Again, we got another mark here. Looks like 60, 618. That's a Charlie. 68C, I don't know. Anyway, another mark on the back. No screws over here in the armrest. So whatever that piece of um, equipment or whatever was attached on the other side was uh, purely just on the other side. So um, my first thought was maybe a shotgun mount went across the back seat. Uh, that would have had uh, some sort of mount over here on the other side to secure it. It wouldn't have just been secured on one side, not the other. Um, this plastic's way too flimsy to hold a shotgun with a rack. Other than those things, the panel is in good shape. Originally it was blue, so I spray painted it black. It's going to be a lot of fun to strip. One of the cool things I did find in the pocket um, when I was taking this apart, there's a little piece of trim that goes here around the seatbelt uh, that was laying down inside of the pocket, which I've got it in the bag, which is still laying in the back. Um, you can kind of get an idea of how thick this paint is. And it's just flaking off of here. So, fingers crossed, we can get this thing back down to the blue plastic. When I pulled the back seat out. I noticed this clip was laying under the back seat, which is fine because this is uh, one of the clips that holds on the windshield trim and the trim around the back window. Um, and I was just getting ready to bag it up and put it in like a miscellaneous bag. And I realized this was not one clip, but this is two clips. These two were actually stuck together under the back seat. And if you look at the back side of it, it's kind of like a black, a really dark gray charcoal color. Um, but the front side here under the light, it's got blue overspray paint on it. I think these have been under the back seat since the car was built because they would have been put on after the car was painted. Uh, and to be stacked together like that leads me to believe that maybe um, guys were messing around on the assembly line. They could have been throwing these at each other. Who knows? But they somehow wound up under the back seat. Nobody picked him up. Uh, here we are, 23, actually 33 years later, and I found him under the back seat. All right, got the headliner out. So something I wanted to point out real quick, you can kind of see that glob of filler sticking out of a grommet. That's where the light bar cable would have come through. That was, I guess they ran it down this channel, probably down the A pillar and out the bottom. I just thought that was pretty cool. The grommet's still in there. They just jammed a bunch of Bondo or filler in it and then smoothed it off on the top. All right, so we've got a lot done on this episode. We've got the back seat, the quarter panel trims, and the headliner. All that stuff's out. We're going to call it done for now on this episode. On the next episode, I'll start working on getting the seats and the console, the dash, and the other parts of the interior out. Working on the wiring and things like that. Be sure to subscribe so that you see when I upload new videos. i uh, probably get a couple of these done a week. I uh, don't want to promise anything, but thanks for hanging in there with me, and stay gloved up.